Okay, show me your hands. Who in here uses Scrum in development? Don't. And quite actually, I don't believe you, and I will tell you why. Uh, I will tell you why I don't think that you're actually using Scrum, and I will tell you why that's a good thing and why you shouldn't actually be do doing Scrum. Because I believe if you're uh, employing Scrum as a development method, you're engaging not in agile but in fragile development, and you should stop doing that straight away. If you've ever seen a definition like the one that's going to pop up on the screen right here where some things, roles, rules, events, and artifacts are immutable, and if you're not doing all of them as specified, you're not doing the thing at all. You might think this is a radical political ideology or maybe a religious cult or something like that. This is taken directly from the Scrum Guide. The Scrum Guide itself stipulates that if you're do not doing all of the rules, roles, events, and artifacts in Scrum, Without any kind of mutation, without any kind of change, you're not doing Scrum. And you can't, because Scrum stipulates a bunch of things that are nonsense. One of the things that Scrum stipulates is that teams self-organize. Now, there's, some, there's a bunch of research about this, and I'm not going to dispute this. Teams can totally self-organize if a critical prerequisite is met, and that is stability. If teams don't change, then they eventually become able to self-organize. Everyone knows that, everyone understands that, and that prerequisite is never given in the software industry. We are a growth industry. Having a new colleague every three months is perfectly normal. We're also a competitive industry, so having a, a colleague gone after three months or every three months is normal as well. Another thing that Scrum stipulates is that every sprint is followed by the next sprint. A sprint being a length of time of about a month or less that you're doing for your development. It's immediately followed by the next sprint. The only thing that that can possibly lead to is burnout. It is a terrible idea to be thinking of a marathon as one sprint after another sprint after another sprint and never slowing down. This is so obviously ludicrous that it baffles the mind why you should be doing something like that. Another thing that the Scrum Guide, an event that the Scrum Guide effectively stipulates as being time boxed to 15 minutes and happening every day is the daily Scrum. So people getting together for 15 minutes every single day. This is not something that works in 2016. Teams are by definition and by default distributed. They don't operate out of the same time zone. They're not by default operating out of the same office. They don't have a physical chance to get together for a daily scrum. There's also, in Scrum, there's literally no planning beyond the current sprint. Because the only thing that you're planning is the next 24 hours which you, which you define in the daily scrum. And the only thing that you plan beyond that is the current sprint. Well, this works, but if you have zero customers and zero users, if you have absolutely no one using your product, then, then those no ones are going to be happy with having no perspective, but for anything else, Forget that. Now, I'm not going to say Scrum is absolutely terrible always. In fact, using something like Scrum can actually be rather quite reasonable for emergency, something that you would otherwise call a code red or a war room emergency or something like that. A self-organizing team with an elected leader that gets together and does a certain job, fine. If your company is permanently in an emergency that requires this, hand in your notice. Get out of there. You're in the wrong place. If you're a manager who thinks that the people under them should be working in emergency mode all the time, you should also be quitting because you're just hoarding your people into burnout. Something that Scrum advocates tend to postulate is that Scrum is the modern and novel antithesis to the waterfall model. You know, the thing where everything is defined from the get-go and then you just cascade down. Well, it may be novel, but only if you've been asleep at the switch or living on another planet since 1975. If you read, if you read Fred Brooks's The Mythical Man Month essay collection from the mid-1970s, he explains what's bad with waterfall and that you should be iterative and that you should be using something that he calls the spiral model, and that's really what you ought to be using. Scrum advocates also say that if Scrum doesn't work with your team, well, you've got the wrong team. You should fire some people and hire some new people. Um, that is fundamentally false. If Scrum doesn't work with your team, the problem is Scrum, not your team. And if you're advocating Scrum, then it's you who should quit and uh, make way for someone who doesn't. Finally another, <laughs> finally, another thought is that if Scrum fails to deliver proper results in your organization, then it's because you're applying Scrum wrong. You, you looked at Scrum, but you misunderstood it, and you're applying it wrong. No, this is wrong as well. Uh, miserable delivery happens when you do Scrum right. I think this is completely impossible to do, but I know that if anyone would ever do that, 
it would definitely lead to disaster. So as a result, please be incremental, be agile, be iterative, all that is fine. And there's even some things that are good in Scrum that you could actually use, but recall, if you use just those, you still won't be doing Scrum. So please, don't be a Scrum bag. Thank you.